Welcome to the Tradesman Channel. My name is Jim and in this video we are going to be discussing the basic tools you need for off-grid building. Stay tuned. So first up will be draw knives. Now draw knives are one of the most important tools that you're going to use for many tasks when you're out in the woods or you're just doing any, even in your wood shop at home. I mean, none of these tools here are strictly for off-grid. They have a lot of uses. It's nice about a draw knife. There's a big one I made there for debarking logs. I have made shorter ones for making pegs. You can make them in between. There's just many, many jobs and many styles of draw knives that you can, you can have. Now you can find draw knives a lot of times. You can find them at flea markets really cheap. You can get them 10, 15 bucks a piece. You may have to do a little cleanup on them, maybe repair the handles, but it's really not too bad. It's nothing that you're going to have to really worry about in the long run, finding them or anything like that. There's plenty of tool makers out there who make brand new ones. So it's just, uh, but it's definitely one of the necessity tools to use. Now this is a shaving horse that I'm working on here. I made quite a while ago. I have since revamped it, but the shaving horse is one of the handiest things to have if you have a draw knife. And right there is a good example of making legs for the shaving horse. You can make your pegs for if you're building a log cabin for pegging your horses together so the logs don't bend and crown and stuff like that out on you. So draw knife definitely one of the A1 important things that should make your list of tools to bring every time. Axes and hatchets. Another super important tool for any off-grid building, timber framing, anything like that. Going to the woods to build something without an axe or a hatchet is like going to prom without a rubber. It's just uh, not very smart, I suppose. So you can do a lot. I like hatchets quite a bit for a lot of the things I do. For when I'm cutting joinery, like you see here, that's a big uh, scarf joint for a top plate on the timber frame barn I built. You can check those videos out on the channel. There's over 300 of them. That was a big project. But uh, you can just do a lot. You can shape with them. You can hew logs with them. You can cut your firewood with them. You can split your firewood. Axes have been around since the Stone Age. They're just a very handy, handy thing to have. And they are certainly not obsolete. Now granted, it's a lot easier going to the woods cutting trees with a chainsaw. It's a lot faster. But if you're truly looking for that off-grid experience and you like blisters, definitely go with an axe. Probably a good all-around, all-purpose axe to take to the woods if you're only going to take one would probably be a decent felling axe because you can do quite a bit with it. So they are handy. Next up are chisels. Probably the most used tool in my tool arsenal when I'm building things like you're seeing me working on here. That is a two inch timber framing chisel. And if you're going to go to the woods and you only have one set of chisels that you can bring with you or you can afford to buy, I would certainly recommend a set of good timber framing chisels. You want to cover the one inch, inch and a half, and two inch. That'll take care of pretty much any needs you have. The two inch chisel, if you cannot afford to get yourself a timber framing slick or you can't find a used one, the two inch chisel will do a lot of what you need for that. Now those are a good long chisel. They're beautiful for making uh, mortises, things like that. They're just nice all around. Now you can do a little bit finer chisel work with them. You don't have to be hacking out joinery like I'm doing here. But it's definitely, definitely worthwhile. Now these timber framing chisels, they do pop up quite a bit at flea markets. If you live in the uh, the northeast where timber framing was huge for a long time, chances are you're going to find some chisels fairly cheaply. They may, may need some repair, you may have to do a new handle for them, but they're definitely worth it. You can get them sometimes 10-15 bucks and to buy a new one like what you see I'm using there is a little over a hundred dollars. Definitely worth having. If you're only going to, this is definitely, th this tool list here is pretty much the bare necessities to get you going into what you're going to need. So that section will wrap it up for chisels.
Hand saws, another super important tool. Because if you're going to build something, you need to be able to cut. Now keep in mind, a lot of these tools, you can throw this entire list in your day pack if you really had to. You could figure out a way to strap it in, carry it into the woods with you. Like I said, there's nothing fast about it, but it will get you where you need to be. And if you're looking for that experience of doing it in the traditional manner, these are definitely the tools you want. These hand saws, you can find them dirt cheap. A lot of times, three to ten dollars a piece at a flea market. In pretty good shape, just need the rust cleaned off of them and uh, sharpen the teeth, set, and set the teeth. So if you're going to be looking for them and you want just the two saws you should really have, it should be a crosscut saw and you should also find yourself a ripping saw. The teeth on them are totally different, the set's different, they're meant to do different jobs. But definitely what you're going to want. You can even go to Harbor Freight and get a saw like this right here and it'll do you just fine. Let's get into the odds and the ends of things that you need to haul to the woods to you for your off-grid projects. And no, it's not the sawmill. Although, I'm going to tell you, having the sawmill, one of the best investments you could ever make. If you're able to do it, boy do I recommend it. But this video is not about sawmills. This is about the hand tools you need. So if you're going to the woods and you are planning on building with logs or timbers, you're going to need a way to roll those things around and make it a lot easier on yourself. You don't want to be breaking your body up. I've done that. It's no fun and sometimes it has consequences that last the rest of your life. You don't want that. So if you can, get yourself a PV or a cant hook, whatever you want to call it, just so you can roll logs and timbers around a lot easier. Now this is a more of a higher end one that's made here in the US. I enjoy it, but you certainly don't need that. Get what you can afford. Hit your flea markets for this stuff. Even go online, find the stuff on Amazon, whatever it takes for you to be able to build the things that you want to build. A lot of people who are looking to go the off-grid route, things like that, a lot of them don't have a lot to begin with. So sometimes it's really not easy to budget in for all these tools and things like that. A lot of times I feel that that's the big job building with hand tools is for one, it's a lot less expensive unless you're buying brand new high-end stuff from uh, Lee Valley or Lee Nielsen or any, any of those places. Uh, but a lot of this stuff can be found at flea markets. This 2-inch tea auger here, you see me drilling out for a mortise. I picked this up for $15, I think, at a flea market up in Maine. Look for places like that. A lot of this stuff looks rusty, and it usually is, but you can bring it back to life. You can sharpen things up. And it just, end of the day, it makes it possible for you to do the things that you want to do. And that is so important. Another thing I can recommend would be a chain hoist if you're able to swing it. Because you're going to have times where you're going to have to pick up heavy, heavy loads. And when you're looking at a green 10x10 10 10 top plate right there, that there's no way I was hoisting that up to the second floor of my building with brute strength and ignorance. That's just, uh, that's just no good. But... You know, keep in mind, you don't don't pay attention to tool snobs. Get the stuff that you can get, and get the stuff that's useful for you. There's no there's no reason to get hung up on brands and things like that. And yes, I do understand you get what you pay for, but sometimes you have to get what you can afford and make do. I think that's the story of most of our lives. As you can see, I like to make a lot of the stuff that I have, and that's more, for one, it's more affordable for me to do it that way. Secondly, I get a lot of satisfaction out of using a tool that I've made. I was going to get into making and selling tools, but I've decided that I just don't have time for everything. If any of you are wondering why I'm not doing that, any of you regulars. But uh, anyway, I think this is a good place to cut it off. I'm not sure why I have this footage in here. I just thought it was nice. Just one of the projects, but a knife sure is handy out in the bush, I can tell you that. So, look forward to more things like this coming down the pike. We're going to get into, uh, probably get into rig, uh, rigging heavy loads, things like that. And we're just going to play around with it, see what happens. I'm going to be doing these types of videos while I'm building the sawmill trailer for the upcoming big project. 
rather than bore you with 20 part series of getting hardly anything done in each one because I get tired of making those videos myself so anyway I hope everybody enjoyed this one tonight if you liked it please hit that thumbs up button subscribe leave a comment below any questions leave them below it does nothing but help me grow and I really appreciate it have a good one everybody and I'll catch you on the next one